Welcome back, Guardians, to the Final Fantasy X HD Remaster. I'm Scott, and you're at the Scott Spot channel. Okay, um, I just want to say real quick that I have officially killed over 30 fiends here. Actually, way over 30. Um, so let's go collect our reward real quick. As I said, you have to defeat 30 fiends to get past all these doors. The fiends, now freed, release the Seal of Yevon. And our third chest, or the chest should be back here. And our award is a simple level 4 key sphere. Which is kind of unfortunate because I already have a couple of those. But it's not that bad when you think about it. Because for one thing, a lot of people likely won't have the means or the knowledge to about where to get level 4 key spheres beyond this. As well as, um, even if you did, I mean that basically saves you 120,000 gil, which is not petty change. Or maybe it is. After all, I have two million and eight, two million eighty-two thousand seven hundred sixty gil. I did have more, but I spent a little bit of, of it uh, bef before I recorded this, and I'll tell you why momentarily. Now, you also recall I was trying to capture ten of every inside sin monster while I was at it, and I did so for all but three, and those three were um, the demonolith, the um, Great Malbaro and the Wraith. I've got uh, a good chunk of them. I think I have at least five of all of them. Uh, but I decided to hold off on that because those are the three rarest fiends here. And on top of that, there is one more area in the game that we have yet to explore. It's an optional dungeon. And it's basically like a challenge for players. Um, but yeah, those three fiends in particular are holdovers from Inside Sin into that dungeon. Which, we probably won't get to this episode, but we will get close. Also, uh, fighting all those fiends, as you may have imagined, uh, leveled up the characters quite a bit, so I'm going to talk about what happened with everybody. Let's see. First of all, I just want to mention that I actually, actually ran out of power spheres. I didn't think it was possible, but I went to zero. So what I ended up having to do was go to... Sorry about that message beat, by the way. Uh, go to Besaid and use um, Orin's Extract Power uh, skill on the enemies there. There is a faster way to get spheres, but I didn't need that many, and I wasn't too concerned about it, so I didn't worry about it. Um, and I'll talk about that faster way at a, in a later video. Um, you could also use, if you're not playing the International slash HD version, you could use um, Power Distillers. Power Distillers were in... The Distillers were in the original version, right? If I'm wrong, I'll correct myself in a text here. Anyway, enough of that. So, Kamari learned um, Delay Attack. Sorry, this is going to take a minute. I might have to just do a recap video, honestly. Shit. Let's see, what's this? Yeah, Kamari learned Delay Attack. What I had him do was um, he got to this point, and at this point you have the option of going either right to Orange Grid or down uh, to... Tetis's. Well, after examining it, I realized that it was possible to go through um, part of Orange Grid and then loop back around. Pretty efficiently, I might add. So, what I did was I came down and got Delay Attack, and then I also got Provoke. And then at, I came all the way to this point because this is the point where you can loop down from Orange Grid to rejoin Tetis's. So now I have him on his way back going through Orange Grid and he has learned Sentinel and he's about to learn, he's a few shiver levels away from Entrust so he went through the end of Orange Grid and as you can see he's also really close to Waka. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, let's see, Riku. Riku, she learned Sloga, Delay Buster, um, I had her go down into Yuna's grid really briefly to get life. And Heska. So, not a bad haul for Riku. Lulu, um, she finished her quest into the secret region of Yuna's grid at the beginning to get auto life. And then, after that, I had her just start working her way through the beginning of Yuna's grid, where she learned life and pray. I thought about having her come up into Titus's grid um, to 
get some other potentially useful abilities, but I decided that Lulu had no business over there in Titus's grid at this point. Uh, nor, and plus, we have enough characters with Titus's abilities at this point. Let's see, what else? Um, Titus, Titus, Titus. Titus learned. Let's see. He was going through back to the beginning of Waka's grid, I believe. So he learned Silence Buster. And then he learned Drain. And then I had him take a sidestep over here to the end of Lulu's grid to get Flare, because he was right there. So I figured, why the hell not? But I'm going to have him keep going through uh, Waka's grid as he get, gets more sphere levels. Let's see, Waka. Uh, he finished Titus's grid. Let's see, where is it? I think. Yeah, Waka got quite a bit of mileage because I think he's one of the characters of double AP. I could be wrong about that. Um, Waka learned... Surely to God, I didn't go this far back, but I have in my notes to tell you guys that he learned Quick Hit, which is over here. Oh, I know what I must have done is he probably... I had him uh, finish Titus's grid going this way, got get Quick Hit, and then I had him use a Return Sphere to go back up here, which is where um, Waka's grid, or Titus's grid, meets Orin's. And then I just had him begin working his way backwards through Orange Grid because that's all that's left is um, the last bit of Orange Grid, or about half of it anyway. Yeah, uh, both uh, Waka, Titus, and Orin only have about half a grid left of each one of those other three characters. So all three of them are going to be identical before long. Um, and then while he was doing that, he learned Sentinel and Entrust. As for Yuna... I had her... Okay, I have quite a bit to say about Yuna, according to my notes here. Um, first of all, I had her use a white magic sphere to learn auto life from um, what Lulu did for her. Lulu activated it, so I just used a white magic sphere to activate it for Yuna, too. Should be useful. I mean, what else am I going to do with a white magic sphere? So, then, I was already towards the end of Lulu's grid, so I went ahead and finished it and got Flare. And then I moved up here into, I believe it's Waka's grid, and got Drain and Dark Buster. Now, it may not make much sense to uh, work through Waka's grid, but there's not that many, um, that much of a trek to get back through Waka's grid, so I'm just going to have her work her way that way, and then once she gets through Waka's grid, she'll come into Kamari's grid, and from there she could work up and get to her the real goal here, Ultima. Once she has Ultima, we can move her down at the, to the beginning of Lulu's grid and have her work to the, where we first warped her onto Lulu's grid and get those last few extra bits of Lulu's magic skills. I thought about using a black magic sphere to learn Ultima, um, and then going from there, but I decided that the trek through Waka's grid wasn't that long, so I might as well just go with it. Whew, that was a lot to say. Um, that just leaves Orin, who... Basically, he didn't learn any new abilities somehow, but he is about to finish the second half of Waka's grid and get Triple Foul. And once he's done that, I'll have him probably try to do a Return Sphere over here to where Titus is, Titus is to uh, finish Waka's grid. Hopefully Titus will be a little bit closer to the beginning of Waka's grid before that happens. Anyway, that's the plan. So, how far into this video are we now? <laughs> Just past nine minutes, huh? Or close to it. Took a, I knew that would take a while to explain, but I didn't. I wanted you guys to know what was going on, and if you're following along, you can follow my sphere grade strategies. Not that it really matters at this point, because our characters are just so all-powerful. Anyway, that is the last thing to do inside Sin. Besides finish the game, and I'm, I'm not ready to finish the game. Like I said, we still have some side quests. We have a couple side quests left, and we also have, you know, for the love of God, the monster arena bosses and um, stat maxing, which normally I don't think I would worry about, but it, it's not... Mm, I don't want to say it's too easy, because it's, it's definitely really hard to stat max in this game. But at the same time, it could be a lot worse, and there's a trophy uh, offered for it, basically. So, yeah. Let's go ahead and board the airship. Now, um, 
let's see. First of all, I'm going to nip another small little side quest in the bud right now. Let's go to Luca. If it ever loads. Okay, so the reason we are going to Luca is... Do you remember back the very first time we came to Luca? We went to the Sphere Theater, which we learned about music and movie spheres, which are basically... Um, just unlocking the soundtrack and a movie gallery of all the game's FMVs. We came there again later in the game to find Awaka after he had been freed from Bavel. Um, well, I came here bef uh, between the last episode and this one to go ahead and buy all those spheres. The reason being was that um, I thought that it was going to make me buy every sphere one by one, but that wasn't the case. Um, instead, it just let me buy them all at once. So I bought all 68 normal music spheres for 136,000 gil and all 50 movie spheres for 250,000 gil. And as you can see, I still have over 2 million gil, so that wasn't much of a dent. Anyway, um, so there's no point in me really going and showing any of those to you. It's just for completion purposes. However, once you have bought all the music spheres, and I I'm not sure about this, but I think you might need all the movie spheres too. I'll, I'll uh, put it in an annotation which one's truly correct. But anyway, if you talk to this guy again, can I interest you in one of our limited edition music spheres? Yeah, definitely. We have a special music sphere offer available exclusively to those who have purchased the entire collection. Let's see, it's the special music sphere set is 40,000 gil, which is kind of overpriced considering you're only getting two music tracks out of it, but. There's something special about it, which I'll talk about in just a second. Since this is a special offer, it is only available as a set. Would you like to purchase it? Of course. Now we have 71 music spheres. And that unlocks the Theater Enthusiast Trophy, which is a trophy basically for buying all the music and movie spheres. So let's go to the Sphere Theater now. I'm not sure if I ever demoed this or not. I think I came in here at one point. So, um... Let's see, set music sphere. The reason that those two music spheres are considered special is one of them... Oh wait, there was three music spheres, I was wrong. So this is the Hum of the Faith, and this one is interesting because it is actually not on the original soundtrack. So let's listen. <laughs> Okay, uh, I guess it doesn't loop, but that played during a flashback cut scene. I think it was while they were at the bottom of Lake Makalania, where uh, Oren talked about overhearing Titus sing the hymn of the faith. So yeah, that's not on the soundtrack. Uh, it's basically James Arnold Taylor humming. The second special sphere is Lulu's theme. I don't know why this one's considered a special sphere. The only thing I can think of is it's specifically side quest related. You'll never hear this theme in the game if you don't um, go through the side quest to get Yojimbo. And it's called Lulu's theme because obviously she is fighting the summoner she guarded on her first pilgrimage. Now, the really interesting thing, uh, won't let me go to the next page, is the last uh, music sphere as you saw was Waka's theme. However, Waka's theme does not appear on the soundtrack nor does it ever play in the game. Um, so let's go ahead and go forward a page. Oh, there, next page up here. Next page. Uh, I think this is the one I'm looking for. Okay, this is uh, the, the Blitzers. And I think the official name of the tr uh, track is like Blitzball Gamblers or something like that. The reason I point this out is this theme is usually associated with Waka, or considered to be Waka's theme. Um, it plays during the scene where you first meet Waka, and then a couple other scenes important to Waka, such as uh, when he's you're watching him play in the Blitz Sphere. 
when you first get to Luca. But the reason I played that is I wanted to just compare that to what is actually Waka's theme. Um, and like I said, it's never used in the game. So I'll just let you listen to the whole thing uh, loop through once. Okay, I think that it's looped through once and it just doesn't go back to the beginning or something like that. Could be mistaken. But, uh, yeah, so they, uh, Nobu Umatsu composed a theme. I assume it was Nobu Umatsu composed a theme just for Waka. Uh, he's the only character that doesn't have a theme that plays in the game. Uh, which must have been pretty disappointing to compose a piece of music that never gets even used. I can't think of what track this might play in, except for maybe they could have used this when you first meet him. Um... He wouldn't be the only one. I think Riku's theme only plays once in the game as well. Could be wrong about that. But anyway, uh, this episode's already gone longer than I thought it would, and we haven't even we didn't even get as far as I thought we were going to. So I think I'm going to end it here, Guardians, and uh, I will catch you next time at the Scott Spot for more Final Fantasy X H2 Remaster. My plan is to show you guys the quickest way to make a shit ton of gil, and also um, how to freaking... Oh, we're also going to go and unlock uh, all our rewards from the Monster Arena for capturing every fiend in Spira, except for Sin and the bonus dungeon. So yeah, look forward to that. I'll see you guys next time at the Scott Spot. <laughs>